a lot of 5e commentary has gotten away from like requiring you to have like a, a source of power like a deity paladin especially yeah. was like oh it's your oath they basically kept this the exact same of like you can break your oath who remembers when they were saying the rogue comes with a lot of mother may i stuff and and then they <laughs> they kept the cleric's divine intervention which is the definition of mother may i where you literally have to ask the dm to do something and the dm just make a decision again every adventurer's league's friend got it yes and so if the paladin <laughs> breaks their oath, which again is subjective, they give you some, you know, like you you try to repent and stuff, but if it's willfully violating their oath and shows no sign of repentance, the consequences might be more serious. What are those consequences? At the DM's discretion, an impenitent paladin might be forced to take a more appropriate subclass or even to abandon the class and adopt another one. This does not go over well with people. I like this stuff of like the paladin having their oath that matters but there's not really anyone enforcing it and it's like where does the power actually come from i find it all narratively confusing and bland but i like it in is. like Baldur's gate 2 when there was a paladin keldorn as an npc that could join your party and he was very much beholden to his order and what they asked him to do yeah. and trying to move up in it and upholding things and helping those who are coming up in the order like animan another npc who wanted to become a knight and be accepted into the order and depending on your choices he would or would not be and he might actually go down a really bitter path where he hates the order and becomes a very evil character and even might attack that other character keldorn saying i've had it with you like that is interesting to me but i know that the modern 5e and now one DD experience is not really about that so i don't know why they keep including stuff like this that just doesn't jive with people that aren't think... like me i guess <laughs> And, yeah, it, and it's my, still DM my, discretion. Like, it's just asking for friction. That's what I think. My take on that is this is just where it came from. So, like, if you look at, like, a, like first edition or second edition, when you, you look at the Paladin, it's like they weren't really concerned with balance. Like, you could have 5,000 experience, and I don't know if these are exactly, but, like, you might be a level 6 rogue, a level 4 Paladin, and the same party with the same amount of experience. But that's because if you just look at it level by level, the Paladin was stronger than a fighter. But it came with a whole bunch of other things and hoops you had to jump through because you were getting your powers from a divine being it was part of the story you wanted to tell and i just think mm -hmm. between paint with a broad stroke we'll just say cultural differences in how things like religion is viewed today versus say they were 30 40 50 years ago a different medium a different vehicle a different way that people want to approach it because that's what it is i find that sad because like when i think if part of part of the desire and that's part of the storytelling process for me with with a paladin a cleric or a warlock you know I want to think about my relationship with my patron or my deity. Like, how does that, how does that work? You know, like, and the organization, like, is there anything where my character is looking at like, okay, the organization is saying one thing, but the deity is saying something else. What am I going to choose? Like that becomes all of a sudden something that could be a really cool choice point and, and story to tell. You still can do that. So that's a thing. You know, it's not, it's not like you can't do that. Yeah, I, I completely <laughs> agree with you. 100%. As far as like the game design, it's interesting to me that there's no like breaking your pact for the warlock. There's no breaking your domain yep. for the cleric. I don't know why they, they keep including those with the, with the paladin <laughs> the specifically. Paladin. It's a, That's a really good point. I and wish they would just I, I, separate I, it. Yeah, even though I like this kind of stuff, the mechanics they give us don't really support this. Like they should just say oh, something yeah. like you can't use channel divinity until you're repentant. But then even then the DM has to decide when you are repentant. So I wish they would, if they want this to be a thing, I sure. want them to make it so the DM doesn't have to be the bad guy. That's that's all I want. I Yeah, absolutely. Because in, in first edition, in second edition, these earlier versions of Paladins, they would be like, you break your oath or whatever, you're a fighter now. And maybe you can re find redemption and get back in good graces. But <laughs> that was yeah. the change. <laughs> I, Phil always brings up good points. And he does point out um in chat this does give precedent that it's okay to switch subclasses which is is often like a, like a, let's call it retraining like it makes more yeah. sense for my character to have a shift into this other subclass for whatever reason that is a good thing it, it sets a precedent for that i agree with that well particularly if you're getting your powers from a divine being or a yeah. patron or something like that if any of them would have yeah. precedent and storytelling believability for that to happen, surely it would yeah. be the cleric paladin and a, warlock. A great example is Ford from Critical Role Campaign 2. I was thinking 2. about Ford this whole time. Yep. <laughs> He's a warlock. He comes into conflict with his patron very directly, shifts away, and then he starts getting paladin levels for uh, paying like fealty and uh, serving the wild, the wild mother. mother. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. There, there's no really game mechanics to really support that. You have to work with your DM on it. You just um, work together, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is kind of strange when they put it in the book, and it almost seems like the DM, especially newer DMs, are going to feel like they have to enforce this. <laughs> How many horror stories have you heard of someone being like, you're a, like, even just a month ago, I heard of someone, they had real, like, player to player conflict. It really wasn't about the characters. The players had conflict with each other that was playing out in the game. And one uh, of the players okay. said, like, would your, would, should your paladin be doing that? And I'm like, you shouldn't even be talking about the paladin right now and so i don't know why this always seems to come up with paladin but i think it comes to, back to stuff like this yeah that um well they also used to yeah. only be lawful good so the, i think some of this yeah. stuff comes from deep roots in the game that are just kind of different now yeah there was and a <laughs> they just say at the dm's discretion and it's just like that those are four words to describe you should your session zero kind of is ongoing and if the yes. dm is thinking like this kind of seems a little weird this feels anti but this should just be like it could be a text message it could be <laughs> whatever it's just like your paladin seems to be a little odd is there something going on here like are you happy with this do you want to try and tell a story where there's conflict between you and your your deity like what's yeah. going on and then and then god you know you you could you could have a conversation and talk about it and figure it out yeah <laughs> like, i don't know <laughs> the uh it, it, it just becomes interesting when the player has no interest in like what actually makes a paladin a paladin they just wanted the smite like the stuff that happens yeah. you know I would say that's most Paladin players of 5e. They have no interest in an oath. That's just my experience. Yeah. And that's one reason I say the Paladin is my least favorite class in 5e is because I think the oath is what is supposed to make the Paladin most interesting, but it's hand wave. Uh, yeah. si similar, people didn't like that the Druid can't use metal armor. I think that's interesting and the lore behind it is interesting, but it's usually hand waved, you know, yeah. but it doesn't cause conflicts like the Paladin does. Like there was a, a yeah. pretty prominent yeah. YouTuber, Don Forged Cast, who doesn't do stuff anymore and had a lot of controversies i remember watching his stuff when i was new to 5e and new to youtube uh, around D, D especially it was his hill to die on that paladins had to be lawful good there were some really awkward videos where like he just like really doubled down and was angry <laughs> and i feel like that was like the avatar of a, what okay. is going on yeah. in the game of like this <laughs> conflict of paladins and their oaths and like forcing players to have oaths when they really don't want them i just think if you're a dm and your player wants to play a paladin you just have to have that conversation yeah figure out what it is that's at the core of wanting to play a paladin and then figure it out yes pro tip to you dms out there if someone wants to play a paladin find out why <laughs> because yeah. you don't want to enforce something you like should this be doing that with every own. character <laughs> Yes, but. but for some reason, <laughs> Paladin is it is especially a problem. Do not skip that conversation. Do not skip it. Like like Jake's saying, do it for everybody. But if there's a Paladin, think to yourself, I really need to figure this out. Dungeon Doctor, <laughs> hey, good to see you, by the way. Uh, another good YouTube channel. They need to frame the oath breaking as a conversation between them. Yes, they need to frame it differently. That is a great point. I don't mind them having the blurb, but they should say, if the player is interested in exploring what it means to have an oath, then maybe yep. talk to them about it. That is you a great need note. to discuss what that means for this character in this game. That would fix my problems with this and probably a lot of the cultural issues we're having in the game if they framed it differently so the DMs know how to approach it.